Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna talk about how to solve basic exponential equations. This may or may not be a review for some of you, but you know me, I like to just get right into it, so let's do it. So, okay, um, th this type of equation, I feel like if you're in pre-calculus, maybe you've seen this once before, but we'll go through how to work through this. So what you wanna do is, you want to write both sides of the equation with the same base. This is the general strategy with solving your more basic exponential functions. This can't always be done, but if you can, then it's a basic equation and it's it's like a much easier thing to solve. We'll talk about in another video like how this can kind of go sideways. <laughs> All right, so in this case, this side's already written really, and then this, I would wanna write it as the same base as this side. So three to the what equals 81. You might have to get out your fingers and toes to figure that out. So this would be three to the fourth. So that's the first thing that you've gotta do. You want to have the same base on each side. Next, you wanna set the exponents equal and solve. Now I'm running out of space here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take these exponents and I'll just set them equal here. So x plus one equals four. And now you just solve this equation. So this would just be x equals three. And so that would actually be your solution in this case. So this is an example of like a really nice, straightforward, basic exponential. Um... Okay, so let's ratchet up the difficulty just a little bit now. So I've got four to the x minus two equals eight to the x minus one. Okay, so this equation is harder because both sides have to be rewritten with the same base. How do you know that? Well, you can't take four squared and get eight, right? That doesn't happen. So both sides, you, you can write them with a base of two. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna have, instead of four, so maybe I'll do this in pink just so you can track me here. Four is two squared. So it's that to the x minus two. See how I put parentheses around that? That's gonna matter in a moment. Now, the other side, eight, how can I rewrite eight? Eight is two to the third, and then all of that to the x plus one. Okay, so when this happens, what you wanna, dis what you wanna do is you wanna rely on what you know about exponent properties to distribute. So we multiply the exponents in this case, so this will now become two to the two x minus four equals two to the three x plus one. And from here, now you do the same thing that the, the same procedure. So we're gonna just take the exponents and set them equal to one another. So I'm gonna have two x minus four equals three x plus one. And then I just go through with the work to solve this. So I'll subtract the two x from both sides so that I'm left with negative four equals x plus one, and then I could subtract off the one to get that x equals negative five. And so that would be my solution in this case. Okay, so I thought it would be good for us to try some of these on your own now. I feel like I've kind of given you the, the core of, of what you need to, to do for this. I highly recommend that you try this on your own and then hit play to watch the solution. Okay, so this is the same deal where I have to rewrite both sides with its own base. So in this case, the base would be three. So this will be three to the third to the two X equals three squared to the X minus one. And so then I'm left with three to the six X equals three to the two X minus two. And then I can just set six X equal to two X minus two. So then I can subtract off the two X to get four X equals negative two. And if I divide that by four, I will get that x is just equal to negative one half. So that would be my solution in this case. Okay, so moving on to b here. So now in this case, the, we actually have both sides already written with the same base. So you just wanna use exponent properties to finish this. So again, I recommend like it looks harder than it is. I recommend that you just try this on your own and then hit play if you think you've figured it out. So if I use my exponent properties, like this just becomes e to the negative 2x, that's really it, and then I can just take out the exponents. It looks like it's tricky, and I think it's like, because the e is like, oh, it's something special. It's really not, e is just a number, right? It's not, it's just a number. So, okay, if I go ahead and I try to solve this, so I add x to each side, I get three equals negative x. So 
I divide both sides by negative 1 to get x equals negative 3. No problem. Okay, and so for this last one, so this is another example where you want to rewrite both sides with the same base. I know it looks harder, but it, once again, I'm going to say like, I, I think part of the work's already done for you. So just try to lean into it, give it a try, see how it goes. The worst that happens is you don't get it right and then you can watch the solution. So I'm gonna rewrite this side as three to the one half. And then this side I'm gonna write as three squared. So now I have that same base. And I know this said square root of three, but I can just write the square root right as a rational exponent. So then I get three to the one half x plus three over two equals three to the two x. Okay, so now I can set the exponents equal and I don't wanna deal with the fractions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply every single part of this problem, oops, uh, times two, every single part, right? And that will allow me to drop out the denominators. So I'm just left with x plus three equals four x. So then I can subtract the x's to one side, so I get three equals three x, and so then if I divide both sides by three, I just get x equals one. So worked out pretty well. So the last thing that I wanna address in this video is just how do the previous examples differ from what if I had the x here versus in the exponent? So sometimes this throws people off, so I just wanted to like compare the two examples. Okay, so now what we're trying to figure out is what number do I take to the three halves exponent to get equal to eight? So the solving strategy for this type of problem is different. You, so what you wanna do in this case is you wanna think about what exponent can you take this to? Like you already know the exponent that you're working with. So what exponent can you use to get x by itself? And the, the general strategy is to use the reciprocal of the exponent. So if I take this side to the two thirds, this three halves exponent will drop out. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So I have x just equals eight to the two thirds. And then you just have to remember what the rational exponent means. So I take the cube root of eight and I square it. That's what that's asking me to do. So this becomes two squared. So my answer in this case would be x equals four. So maybe you wanna just give that a try real quick just to kind of flip in your head how this is a different solving strategy. Give it a try, hit play when you're ready. So I'm gonna take both sides to the two fifths, two fifths. And so what you might notice with this one, so if I take four to the two fifths, so sometimes this can happen. So if I try to take the fifth root of four, I can't do that easily. So sometimes with a problem like this, you might need a calculator, so that's okay. So you can just plug in four to the, the the two fifths in your calculator. Just remember to put parentheses around the exponent. So this would become 1.741. We'll just round to that. So sometimes you can evaluate the rational exponents. Sometimes you can't, it just depends. Okay, so now for this last one. So you can still use the same strategy here. So um, if I want to take both sides to the negative one fourth, that would be the reciprocal exponent, right? So then I just have to think about what does this actually mean? So if I take one over 16th to the negative one fourth, well, I can get rid of the negative exponent, right? By flipping the fraction. And so then really, I just need to take the fourth root of 16, which is equal to two. So my answer in this case is x equals two. So sometimes with problems like this, you just have to kind of think about like what you know about the exponents. Sometimes you can evaluate them. Sometimes you might need a calculator to help. Um, but you, you have a lot of knowledge, so you just really want to flex it in problems like this. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys, and I will catch you guys in the next one.